continue on the Sam Elliott board. <clears throat> it's been a few days since I've worked on this. So I got my same palette here. I'm going to be cleaning up some of the skin. So nah. I'm also my my medium skin's over too, so I'm digging some of that. I'll show you what I'm doing right here. Kind of grody stuff. That will also skin over, and you don't want these dried chunks of skinned over medium getting in your paint if you can help it. So I just, just peel those off and dig them out, throw them in the trash as well. Might top that off with some of oil oil in a bit. For right now, all right, so I'm just going to go and check all of my pigments. That looks like. They've all skinned over. You can skip through this if you don't want to watch me do this, but this is part of what I do. I'm just going to go through every one of these. This is Portland Gray Light. And it's one of the lighter colors on my palette. I've you've seen some of the other few videos I've done, I've kind of explained that I don't generally use white on my palette. Um, that's just a matter of personal preference. In fact, it might be better that I had white. I don't know. But if I can get away from it, I try to do that. <clears throat> There's not a lot of colors that are just pure white. Um, if you're painting sort of natural colors, I think. And I, that's kind of the kick I've been on for some time is getting colors to look natural or more natural, avoiding a cartoonish look. A lot of my work has had really vivid, saturated colors in it because I used to, uh, do a lot more mixing of complementary colors rather than u utilizing earth tones and neutral tones. So the color, like I had a lot of really saturated colors that would be juxtaposed next to each other. And they look good. That they, The thing that keeps them from looking too cartoonish is that I've, I work my colors throughout the painting so I don't have colors that are isolated. But like reds are reds and greens are greens. And so there's a lot of saturated color and they, I use those to mix neutral tones. So that's what I have done in a lot of my work, especially up and through about 2013, I think, started getting into more neutral, you know, exploring the neutral tones. It's funny, it's things that you, you go to art school, which I did, I went to, our school in Columbus, Ohio. You learn about uh, earth tones and they don't, I don't know, you, you go through a lot of color theory, but I find that I didn't really understand how to use earth tones until, you know, 13 years later. All right, back, back to painting here. <laughs> so, uh, Let's jump into it. I'm not sure where to begin. Uh, I think I will begin by, some people call this oiling. I think it's oiling in. Something I've always done is like I take some of my medium. I'm gonna get some of my, show you what I got here. I got a liquids and linseed oil mixture, but it's pretty well mixed up. I like to get a little, a little goober here. Let me get that out. I like to um, put a little bit of, linseed oil floating on the top of that. Here we go. The linseed oil tends to dry much slower than the liquid. So let's do it like that. So the liquid makes the paint dry faster, but linseed oil is a little more, I think it's more viscous when it's more runny. It's more runny, say it that way. And uh, linseed oil is a little thicker. Uh, you don't want to go really heavy handed on this stuff when you're layering, put put it mixing in with your paint or doing like this, uh, just oiling in a piece. Uh, these mediums and oils tend to 
dry yellowish. And we want to avoid that yellow tint, so it's going to change the color of your painting, especially over time, uh, if you care about those things. All right, so just kind of like getting the canvas kind of wet. Makes the colors pop a little bit, see what we're doing. And then when I paint uh, brush strokes on there, the, the paint's going to kind of feather around the edges and soften the brush stroke a bit instead of uh, having a real dry brush stroke on top of a dry, dry ground. That makes sense. Kind of see some things I want to jump on here, I think. Mainly it's the shape of his face, the sort of movement of his expression. It's going over here and poking up under his mustache. So I want this sort of flow movement that way. I'm going to, I'm going to be working, I've been working with flat brushes a lot lately. Uh, so I'm going to get a couple of those just to start out with. And I'm looking at my palette. So I have these palettes set up for most of my paintings. Like I'll, often I'll be working on several paintings at a time. So instead of clearing my palette and getting, redoing everything every time I, I get these uh, like 11 by 14 inch hard palettes you get at our supply store. And I get these paper palettes that you can just clip on to the, to the uh, board. And then when I'm done with this, I can just unclip it and throw it away, put it on a clean sheet. That's kind of how I've been doing it. The reason I keep a separate palette for each painting is because I can look here to see what I've been doing. And so I'm jogging my memory from, so this is Wednesday, so last Friday is when I was working on this painting. I need to remember what colors I was using to mix these tones. And it looks like I was using um, some of this indigo blue, this Naples yellow, kind of getting this gray color here, and mixing it in with uh, these cadmium red lights and and uh, indigo blues and some of these greens. So I want to see if I can kind of work this color up again. So I'm going to start out with cabbie red light, some indigo blue, just get some medium in there and kind of mix it together. That looks awful dark. So I kind of lighten it up with the lighter color of the cadmium red light. That's going to warm it up a bit too, but it's, it's okay. So I just want to see how that looks. That is way dark, way dark. But maybe not bad for some of this other part of his face over here. So let's do that, see what that does. That sort of starts to get it. But it's really warm. So it's too orange. But I don't want to necessarily darken it a whole lot. So I'm going to mix in some of this raw umber. See what that does to it. That kind of neutralizes that warmth a bit. I'm just going to go into the Payne's Gray and try the same thing. I like that. That's working a lot better. Okay. Some just yellow ochre to lighten it up. It might be the right move. That looks pretty good. All right. I want to start trying to capture some of the likeness here. And so reset the monitor a bit. So there's some uh, reflect light under here. And so 
So I'm using these brush strokes to kind of draw on the upper lid here. And uh, I want to darken some of them. Let me pick up some of this. So I'm going to take and make a little bit of this mixture I had the other day, which is um, indigo blue and you see yellow ochre it up a bit. Maybe some raw umber that'll gray it down. Then I'm going to take some of this Portland gray light. Looks like these are the colors that I was using in a shirt, so Naples yellow. What I wanted to do, and so when I do that, now I'm, I wipe out all the paint out of my brush, or a lot of it. You can use some thinner to get a little bit more out and just squeeze the rest of it out. I've been considering moving to dipping, having an oil that I dip it into to squeeze it out, get rid of my solvents, but I just haven't been experimenting with that yet. I've got a lot of experiments running and it's hard to keep track of everything. But So I'm mixing these two to, this with the uh, darker reddish color, so it cools it and darks it, darkens it down a bit. So I want to indicate his eyebrow up here, like that, and bring that like that. And uh, just getting warmed up here. I'm gonna bring in some of and crimson into this. It's really important that some of these darker flesh tones get don't get too cool right away. Right away. They'll, they'll look more nat. They'll read better if they're a warmer tone generally. kind of neutral so like you don't want them to be like red necessarily they're they're better off on the red side for flesh tones okay Then I'm going to take, really just start. We're going to push and pulling some stuff in here. I'm going to change something on my reference so I can see better. Okay. I'm gonna look to a small round brush here. Come and pick up some of this tone. Hmm. Like what's not working and quite a bit is not working. So we gotta find a sort of a Find a groove of this bit. I'm gonna keep working around, seeing what I find here. I'm gonna mix in some of this lighter blue tone with this flesh tone. This orange tone, as you can see, it kind of grays it up a little bit. I'm just gonna go and start using that for the white of his eye there. I think I'm getting too caught up in working on the details, bit. like trying to figure out his eye and stuff. I think that's probably not the best place to start. And I'm 
really getting caught up in the uh, details, and I want to break away from that a bit. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to play around with some more of these tones here. I'm trying to focus more on the shapes here. I may go to my upside down trick here in a second, just to help me kind of break out of this attraction to like minuscule, unimportant things right now. I was like trying to find out where the groove of the session is going to lie. And I want to focus on these shapes, like where his the light, reflected light is hitting his cheek, hitting his nose up there. Then there's a little bit of a tone right there. Describe his nose. I'm going to go into um, whatever this color is, it looks right. And um, yeah, so let's just continue describing the shape of his face and structure, structures of a uh, I'm going to darken this up with some colors in crimson. It's warm and it's dark, so go under like that. And we're going to continue to evolve this a bit as far as like the overall shape and flow of his face. So we don't, the, part, the, the struggle sometimes is to not get caught up in the features. Like we want to start, oh, like I was doing, rendering in eyes and where the eyelids are when we don't have the overall flow of the, of the face, like the movement of the expression sort of blocked out first. And that's what you'll end up doing if you focus on the features is you'll have a, a bunch of features that on their own look correct, but together they don't quite add up. And so you end up with this sort of quasi, like, yeah, it kind of looks like the person you're trying to paint, but something off about it and you just can't quite put your fingers on it because when you look at the features the features look correct but the way they interact together has got to be correct in fact i think that's probably even more important so it's like instead of a bunch of features on a ball it's a ball with a bunch of features and so it's got to read as the structure of a face correctly like where anatomically things work and how they fold over and move around on a, you know, the surface, how the surface changes in three dimensions. And then you can start worrying about, does the eye look, is the eye the right shape and all that kind of stuff. And I can start to see where things are not jiving and then I just start making like the shape of his cheek right here, correct. This is also a good time to have other, you know, a number of references of the person that you're painting if you're working from a photograph. Because you can't always tell what's going on in just the one image. And often having other angles and viewpoints and lighting situations will help you understand what you're seeing in your original photograph so that you know where to put the marks. The photos can trick you. So be aware of that. So yeah, get get different photo references. They don't have to be this, you know, you don't wanna you don't wanna limit yourself to one reference usually of of, of anything, because then you're gonna end up copying the photograph and 
you know, if that's what you're into, that's I guess that's okay. But um, I don't want it to look like it was painted from a photograph exactly. Or, you know, this people might recognize that this is from the Big Lebowski because of the costuming and the general position. But I have several different expressions on his face as references, so I can make us like I can take his eyes from one and put it on the mouth of another and change change the way it looks from one you know so I make sort of a mashup. Um or I dial in and you know there's there's the expression the way we think of it's like if you think of Sam Elliott in this in this scene it's got to feel that way more than it's got to look like the photograph. So that's what we're aiming for. Let's do a couple of things here. My reference. And you might want to change the expression of, you know, adjust things to make it, you know, like to make the, uh, make it look. So like when somebody sees it, the idea is that there's no doubt in their mind who it is. It's, it's exactly their expression or whatever it is. It's like, you know, it's without question. That's what, that's the goal. And so when I'm looking at my paintings, trying to figure out if I got it right, if I have to, if I, if I look at it and it's like, there's any doubt or question or it's like, eh, kind of, it's kind of there. It's not done. It's not there. It has to be nailed it. It's like 100%, like no question who it is. That's, that's the goal that I have and I'm doing, you know, I'm trying to get a likeness. Um, when a lot of my paintings aren't of anybody in particular, I don't concern myself with a likeness so much as that the expression reads as um, right for the context of the painting, I guess. So in this scene, he's he's kind of a jolly looking guy. We're gonna get a pronounced cheekbone there. I'm gonna keep mix a little bit of that warm lizard crimson in there. And I like this blue color. This it's gonna work well in this shadow areas I think it's a little too blue I overestimated that <laughs> he's, got, he's got a his mustache it's kind of funny cracks me up yeah. <laughs> Want this steely gray color in here. Some of that paint's gray. Let me go into some burnt umbra that might bring that up right. That looks pretty good. Cool. All right. Going to continue to fiddle around his mustache area, I think. And um, bring in some of this warmer tones, slightly warmer for this area. That is not quite, it's way too cool. Dip 
dip into some of this yellow ochre here. And uh, see how that works. There we go with that. Okay, so I'm going to really sort of exaggerate what his mustache is doing here. And these brush strokes are following the sort of the movement of his the bristles on his mustache. Let's bring that up here. Gonna paint over these runs and drips. Okay. And I'm going to just continue to work through this to get more paint going here, it looks like. Okay, let's do some more of the indigo blue into it. Some more of the yellow ochre. I might have to get some more of that on my palette here. I'm around. Start running low on paint. Don't do like I do and keep stabbing at it, hoping more will show up. Just get more paint out and put it on your palette. That's the solution to that problem. But uh, sometimes you don't want to like stop what you're doing to to re up on the paint. And I, I get it. That's usually what it boils down to for me. Um, see that little goober right there? That's what happens. Get that out of the way. All right. So I'm using these brush strokes to kind of explain the uh, oops, movements in his face a bit. It's looking pretty decent right there. It's gonna. Have a little bit of reflected light over here on his temple. So I'm going to pick up this lighter tone to accentuate that. Right there, that looks pretty good. Then he has a nice shadow right under, right under here under his. Let's see, back again. I want that brush stroke to express that. Shadow right there. I might go a little bit darker just to punch it. I'm going to go darker on a part of it. Not quite dark enough. I'm going to darken it up with some Payne's Gray. All right. I want to I want to kind of describe this cheekbone he's got going on over here. I'm going to pick up this yellow oak ochre what I got over here. I'm going to try some raw sienna with it. Some warmth for his cheekbone, his cheeks. I'm just going to bring all that in there. Yeah. I'm going to 
darken that up and then I'm going to come in with a lighter tone. So yeah, that's right. That blue sort of color from his shirt will work good for the highlights. Um, And then I'm going to continue some of these tones on his nose here. That, I'm kind of like, kind of blocking that nostril right there. And It's like saying things like that tone right there. Like, this is one thing to do it and another thing to describe it while you're doing it. So I'm learning the process of this myself. So like painting is a constant learning process. There is no really how to, you know, so I don't talk a lot, a lot about this is the way you know, I'm not going to probably be putting out videos about how to paint a face or something like that because everyone, everything's different. So what you don't have to learn how to paint a face. What you have to learn how to do is how to paint, and then you can paint anything. And it's not any different painting a face than it is painting um, a still life of oranges necessarily. Just that a face, the shape of a face is way more complex in our, and there's a lot of emotions that, that are in a face that you may not have in an orange. Just because we think of people as different than oranges, I would suppose. I would argue you could make an orange look like a person if you, or have the emotional qualities. There's really emotional quality, emotional quality and a lot of good uh, landscape and uh, still life painting. But I, I prefer to paint people, so that's why I do it. And let's see. I keep getting down to this painting. I just don't have enough mixed on my palette. So I might have to do some changing here. I have to mix my paint. All right, I am still just working on these loose tones. That's what I want to focus on right here. I want to warm that up a bit. And then we're going to come in cooler tones, like right here, closer to his eye. So what you're getting is some reflected tones, some reflected light hitting right where his eyelid starts to meet his uh, cheek, or not his eyelid, but like his eye socket, the uh, flesh around his bottom of his eyeball. And there's going to be a little bit of light on that. And there's not a really strong, har harsh light. We don't want to like go really light and dark. So I'm not going light and dark, I'm changing um, hue and temperature. So this is not going from like dark to light as much as it is going from this warm orange tone to this gray or the same tone, but gray down and a little blue down. So it goes from warm to cool and from orange to blue, or that appears to be blue, but it's more of a, a green, a light green, grayish green color. 
So that's going to help it look like lights hitting it without using, you know, going from black to white. <clears throat> and we're going to continue that over in the kind of crook of his eye where his eye meets his nose. And as there gets to be more flesh around his cheek, it's going to warm up like so. So I'm, and then I'm modulating this um, cadmium red, light, and gray by going back into this blue mixture and pulling that in there. So that's a complementary color, and that'll help to gray it down. These are about the same values. So I'm taking something of the same value, and I'm just knocking it down so it's not quite so orange. And I'm going to use that to help sort of modulate that tone. So what we're doing is we're just taking these colors that are close to each other here on the palette and using those to push and pull the shape of his face around. So I want to, another way I can do this is I can take some of this burnt umber, I mean raw umber, which is a more of a neutral. That is, I think, too dark. See how that works. Just pulling some of this yellow, it's going to warm it up a little bit. Okay, so we have a sort of a cheek tone here, like that little line from the corner of the nose down to the corner of the mouth. And it's a little bit darker, but it's also pretty warm. So I'm going to mix a chemi red light with some of this neutral mix of chemi red light and blue, the indigo blue. And uh, then it occurs, so you're just going to kind of almost like draw that line in. All right. So I think it's kind of looking cool. All right, I'm going to continue. I'm going to pull in this mixture again, get back into that cadmium red light. And describe the shape of his nose here. Pull into some of this gray tone. That's uh, gonna help describe that. Okay, I think I want to bushy his bush in his eyebrows up quite a quite a bit actually. I think that's one thing that's missing. I'm just gonna pull some straight up raw umber out and mix it with some of this indigo blue mixture and got. Wrap in my brush, so whatever color was in my brush is getting mixed into it as well. Let's make this bushy. Bushy like that. Go right into the indigo blue and rock burnt umber.
I'm gonna just try to keep a lot of this dark over here, actually. Let's pull in this um, burnt sienna. I'm going to work on getting the shape of his face right, his eyeball will, the shapes of his face are right, the features will fall into place, generally. So we're going to focus on getting the, sh the overall shape and flow of his face correct. And then we can start really honing in on features of it, like where his eyeball is and all that kind of stuff. Sort of droopy eye over here. Let me see if I can get that to look right. I'm going to go into this lizard crimson. I like to use that for. Um, Eyelid creases and stuff like that. Sometimes the pain the pain's gray works well for that. Which will still read as warm because it's this is a really warm dark tone, so I neutralize with some raw umber. Even a straight raw umber is still gonna read kind of warmish. Whatever that means. Warmish. I think that was the right sort of movement right there. His eyebrows are darker over here. Go back to this tone right here. Yeah. Look at him a little closer. Yeah. Okay, so I want to. I like this juxtaposition of this raw umber. I'm going to use some raw umber and into this alizarin crimson mix. So the raw umber will um, even though it's the cooler of the browns, it's still warmer than alizarin crimson. It's just on a greenish side. Um, so it's going to cool down the lizard crimson a tad. It's also going to make it more opaque and it's going to gray it up. So those are the sort of 
trifecta of its flight. And I know I kind of just assume everybody knows what I mean by cool and warm and and um, chromatic value and hue and all that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to assume that everybody who's watching this kind of gets at least that much. If somebody needs to that explain, I think I, sometimes I go through and explain some of that too. But. If you're having a hard time following what I'm talking about, uh, let me know so I can start trying to um, take that into some consideration when I'm doing these. All right. His eyes actually. Yep. Be smaller on his face, I think. So I'm just continuing to sort of just move things around, find myself in an area, tool around, and when I can't figure out what the, what's, you know, I don't want to stick around too long in one, in one spot. Because the whole painting has to work together and, it's, and something's not working in a particular area, it might be because the rest of the painting is off. And so sticking around in one area of a painting indefinitely might be a waste of time. Because it might not be that the other part of the painting is off, but you can't see the, the problem that you're having until you move away from it for, for a bit. And then as you, other parts of the painting gel, it becomes more obvious, like, you know, might become apparent like what the problem in the first area of the painting was, and you can go back to it. I'm just kind of having fun here, thinking around on a lot of different parts of the face. Uh, it was kind of fun. I'm gonna move away from that for a bit and start to figure out some other parts of the painting. And um, like I want to make that little I go to a grayer tone for that. I think out, out here. I think I got his face overall a little too peachy. And. Chin down here, start mixing some tones for that. I think I might have had that a little too cool. There we go. And I'm, as long as you find a tone or color that works and you can start working it into the tones on the rest of the on other parts of the painting 
you want to maybe avoid getting too too much similarity throughout you're doing that because you don't want the face to sort of flatten out but if you find something that's working you start taking that color to other parts of the painting you know even if it's different mixtures of that color so this color is working well over top of this peachier color that I had here starting to catch some of that Sam Elliott likeness there I think I'm going to take a bit of that blue in here catch that right there I like that tone on this all right that's looking that looks about correct and then I'm going to take this tone again I think up into some of the hotter spots that's what I mean by hot is like where the the lighter tones are peaking a bit. They look like highlights, but really it's just I'm just instead of mixing a white to hit highlights, I'm mixing a cool a cool gray to cool the temperature down, and that will look like a highlight, even if it doesn't change the um, value structure that much. And so, like on the bridge of his nose, I can do the same thing. I'm going to I think hit a more yellowish tone to begin with. Like I'm gonna make that pretty, some pretty solid yellow ochre. I'm just gonna go around sort of the edges of his nose right here, the shapes, like right where his nose sort of goes from coming up the slope of the side of his nose to turning turning into the uh, top ridge part of his nose. And I'll use that as the basic tone of the face of the uh, the top of his nose. And I'm going to Darken that up a bit too. And I've mentioned this before, but it, so one of the ways to create space, or the illusion of space two dimensionally, is uh, with your tonal structure. So if I want something, like if you think of the landscape painting things in a foggy day, a uh, lamppost that would be close to you if you're looking down a street, lamppost close to you would be darker than the lampposts that are in the background and going farther in space farther away from you as they get obscured by the atmosphere, like the fog. So that same principle we can apply to like painting uh, a portrait in the sense that on this face, his nose is closer to us. So it would make sense that some of the tones would be darker and come forward at us in space. So I'm going to take a darker tone and kind of show you see if i can show you what i mean also it might be more saturated so it might have a little bit more red in it like so and then the tones that are on top of that will be Grade them down a bit. But it's kind of really red and it doesn't look that natural. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some paints gray, mix it in there. That might be a little bit too much. Then we can bring in some lighter tones on top. The highlighter, like where the light's hitting his nose right there. I'm going to lighten that up quite a bit more, I think. Now I'm basically working on a darker tone and then just working 
a darker, more saturated tone, then I'm working a lighter, more neutral tone on top of it. And the eye will blend some of that neutral, some of the darker and, and um, more saturated tone will peek through a lot of that. And your eye will blend those together in a way that looks nice. These tones, the, the, the thing that's going to make this really work well is not really so much the color, but that you have your value structures correctly. And if you have value and temperature well done, your colors can be whatever. They can be way off. You, you don't, your eye doesn't tend to see color before it sees the lightness and darkness of something. And mostly, most people don't pay any attention to shuttles, subtle shifts in temperature of color. It's just not something that's required for survival. <laughs> so we tend to ignore a lot of that. But um, it doesn't mean that, I mean, on a conscious level, I think on a subconscious level, we see all that sort of stuff. But so that's why people are you know, can't believe the, the lifeness of a painting, how it looks so natural, because um, if you see like really good paintings, like they really love the colors, even if the colors are very simple or not accurate at all, it's those temperature shifts and value structures that are correct that make something kind of jump out to the casual viewer. I'm gonna bring those dark tones back in here. I'm gonna hit it pretty dark right under his nostril here. I think I'm probably still getting too caught up in the detail stuff, but can't help it. I wanna knock that down a little bit this romber, I think. Get too much, too orangish. Part of me thinks this is looking a little too formulaic here. Like, which may mean doing something more drastic later. But let's move through the painting before we start getting too nuts with making changes. I want to knock that ear. So I just marked in a tone where I want his ear, but it's way too orange. And so that this isn't going to be the same place in space. So we want to knock that down quite a bit so that it looks like it's falling back in behind his hat or wherever it's going. We can pan over that little drip that I had from last session. We're not married to that. It's fun to sometimes work around them to see if you can, how much of it you can incorporate into, into what you're working on, but that's, we're not gonna focus on that. I'm going to, so I pulled in some of that cool color. This is like a cooler shadow tone, so I'm gonna push that a little bit farther in that direction. And I want to, Pull that tone down a bit. I want to do that with, I think I want to do that with a more neutral dark, dark I can pull some raw umber with that cadmium red light. All right, so I'm gonna see the shape of his face is a little more, oops. Sometimes when I see something that's working, I just go after it and try not to think about it too much. Like if I spend all my time carefully thinking about it, 
I just end up making really hesitant decisions. And so I'm feeling like right now it's better just to attack this. I feel like I kind of know what colors to use for what. So I'm just using the same basic colors I've been using. I'm starting to figure out like where they fit more appropriately in the painting here. So as I get that get that feeling, I'm just going to keep going after that. I kind of kind of see what's working, what's not. All right, I'm going to keep mixing some of these colors here. Chin down there, like that. Okay, I can see that he's got like more shadow from his mustache. Have you seen the eyes? Have you heard the cry of faith? Have you felt the aching hunger and tears falling like rain? Can we find hope for tomorrow? Can we find a hell of Try to keep it fun. Like so, we don't have a really a lot of harsh shadows, and it's there's going to be more subtle variations in the colors and textures of his mustache over here. We don't want um, the necessarily the darkest and brightest tones in the whole painting to be right here so that's, this also has to this mustache has a form and struck you know like a, it moves in space as a whole like a clump and um, don't want to get too worried about individual strands off the top so like that one's way too bright it looks draws a lot of weird attention to itself you can work that in or just like that and wipe it out. So I'm looking for like shapes and movements that are in, in his mustache. So we start. Get something that makes sense. So as it goes around over here, it comes in and out of out of the light a little bit. So again, the, the value structure has got to be correct, otherwise it starts looking cartoony. So let's 
So darker. And then I'm using, I keep going back into this raw umber to keep that darker and on the grayer side. I'll hit a few, few little darker areas. If there's one kind of like that. Right under his mustache. I'm gonna bring in some um, burnt sienna because it's it'll warm this up a bit. It's not so cool. And having some variations in those tones in the mustache will kind of make it pop a little bit too. Then we can come in with a few lighter, lighter variations on top of some of this. Figuring out that kind of right color and temperature, kind of a trick here. How bright do we want us? Maybe we might want to pop a little bit more lighter tone on that. Bring in some of this lightest tone on the palette, which is the uh, Portland Gray Light. And then I'm going to darken that up with this raw umber. That's way too dark. I mean, way too bright. We're not. We'll be bringing some raw burnt number. Use a warmer tone. It's like pulling some of this bluish color into it. See how that looks. Uh, that's all right. I'm just thinking around with this. It's kind of fun. I realize I'm kind of getting too worried about that. We can come and detail some of that later. I want to um, rather obscure his mustache and beard into shadow down here. So it all kind of falls together. I'm going to pull some of those in crimson and do some Payne's gray. Getting this tone correct down here. I'm going to pull some raw umber as I move across this right here. And again, his mustache and beard, or his mustache is blending in with these shadows on, the, on his flesh. So we, I don't want such a distinct transition right there. You don't have to like paint the outside edges of everything. The, the eye tends to piece stuff like that together without, you know, it doesn't. You don't really have to paint down every detail. You can kind of ends up being this little bit of an illusion. I like 
think of it as a game of how much can you get away with? <laughs> like, how little can you put into it? How little detail can you get away with? Probably, I'm probably gonna not go so dark with it. I want to keep that a grayish tone that's like was already under his hat, I think. So. of the eye so let's um, obscure that a bit by bringing darker tones into, into and meld them together together with a sort of this gray tone here I'm going to decide where that ear is. I'm going to go back, paint some, taking some raw umber, straight, straight up raw umber. Describe some of this up here. And again, keeping this likeness is going to be a matter of getting Flo's face correct correctly the right the right sort of brush strokes that describe it you know, the, the things that really the way his face really works and um, you know I might 
end up dropping his mustache quite a bit, actually. I may not have a lot of this in the right spot. I kind of see. So that happens, and you start to see something that's like majorly, would majorly change something, make it work. So I'm going to actually drop his face down significantly. So let's <laughs> get some yellow ochre on here first. I don't have to keep stabbing at this empty spot of paint. I think this is going to, yeah, I can kind of see what's happening. There's a exaggeration that needs to happen and I don't see it. I think that's what's missing. So I'm gonna bring his face way down here like this. Like don't get too worried. We're gonna come back and paint this incorrectly. But I wanna bring his nose down here. Like I want to bring his whole face down, so just going to re-block in these shapes. So like some of this might stay, I don't know. Not likely. All right, let's keep working. Yeah, so I didn't quite pull it. That's what was going on here. This is, there's a movement of this way, but it's, his face pulls down much farther than I had it. I think this is really gonna bring it together here. Make his eyes look correct. Gonna make his nose look better. <laughs> Everything's gonna expression's gonna make a little bit more sense. Pull some raw umber, some lizard crimson, I mean some burnt umber and lizard crimson. So that it's gonna knock in a shadow where is it under his nose. And then I'm gonna take that, keep working into this uh, Indigo blue mixture because that's going to go into his mustache and some of the other parts of his flesh too. Looks like. So that pull really makes his eyes look better. So this, so I was working on his eyes and his eyes weren't the problem. It was the rest of his face, just like I had predicted earlier. So. And then I want to bring this down further. So let's start by bringing the sh correct shape of the shadows here. I'm going to bring hit the lights. So I'm using this lighter blue mixture to use for lightening up my flesh tone color rather than using a white. I'm using like a light blue. And the reason I'm using that is because that's what's the, kind of the color that's in a shirt. It's the color I think I used to mix with this yellow in the background. That actually reads pretty nicely as a shape. So I'm gonna continue to go back and make sure I get these shapes correctly. And 
And when I get the hotter spot on his bridge of his nose with this blue. So I want to let's go back to his nose a bit. I think I got something wrong here. Let's see what's going on. Let's, I think I'm confusing myself with this line right here. Let's do that. Let's get that cheekbone correct. Okay, there needs to be some uh, modulation right there, that shape. And I think I can probably go and indicate that some of where his mustache is going to be. Without really painting a whole lot of it in, so let's let's see what we can get away with here. I'm going to continue to pull this, keep pulling things down. I get too distracted by his. Uh, the remnants of his mustache. Okay, I want, I think I want, to, I want to do it like that. I think I want this to like. I think I got his, some, yeah, all right, I'm, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the shapes of his, let's really start figuring out how to nail this down. There needs to be more shadow under his eye over here. Connect things together. So, like, I don't do detailed drawings, but if you, you know, if you do detailed drawings, you tend to avoid um, the sort of searching around that I'm doing in a lot of this. But that's the part of painting I really like. I, like otherwise, you're just filling in the lines too much. I like to discover the thing in the painting. So that's the that's the reason I do it this way. Um, there's no there's no reason to not do a detailed drawing if you don't want to. So by all means. <laughs> 
that's what you want to do, go for it. I want to really capture this sort of way his face twitches around. And um, so I'm going to paint this shape out further. And really come, come back over here and get on this right here. Bring that out there. Okay, back to his ear. Let's see if we can get that placed in. I don't know if I got the right tone for that. We're just gonna take a wild guess. Just yellow it up a little bit more. Yeah, I want to remix indigo blue color with this raw umber, or burnt umber, I'm sorry. I'm going to come under there, start describing this. Like so. I'm gonna go over over this little invention here. I don't think it's doing me any good. I'm gonna paint over his mustache. And I think I see where so this will start helping us to figure out where. Everything's going to go here. I think his likeness is starting to come a little more apparent. Now I'm going to, so I want to do this, for some reason, I'm just going to do this straight up right there. I like this jacket's going to bring our eyes right up in there. I'm going to take this color as well, just go right up underneath of his uh, collar right here. I'm going to gray this up a bit. Go over that as well. That might look nice just sitting in the background there. We're going to start defining his face with the edges around his face a bit. So I think that's going to end up pulling even more over here, I think. So kind of see what's going on. I need to, his face is at an angle, so it's kind of weird. It's a weird angle on his jawline, but we know that it's kind of square. We're gonna cut that in right there. I'm gonna bring that out like that.
So it might be his chin needs to come out even more. Yeah, that's what it is. I'm going to bring that down. So also, we, we're getting, I think I'm getting maybe a little sidetracked with, we're just confused a bit by where, because I got remnants of his mustache still there. Let's get some life in that cheekbone right there. Maybe like a little indication of I think what's going on is because I don't have mustache really laid in at all, I'm misjudging the length of his face, so let's see where this belongs. I'm just going to go in really loosely <laughs> and try not to get suckered into the details of this part of his face quite yet. We'll see how I can do it. So let's look at some of that. It's a little too purpley, I think. I just knocked it down with some paints gray. Paint's gray sometimes, that's all you got to say. So I like about these n neutral tones is that you can really just focus on working with those and then colors off, you can come back and adjust your color by laying tones that are the right color that match the value structure. So that's kind of the principle of the, so the master paintings is to build a neutral underpainting and then go back and paint over the top of it with glazes of color which is like semi-transparent colors or, or transparent layers uh there's it's another tedious rabbit hole to go on go on into i think so you can use those that principle though to do more direct painting too you just don't build it up in transparent or translucent layers. You build it up in opacities. And so um, a couple of ways you can approach, you can go, you can create a sort of a grayer structure at the beginning and maybe go a little darker with your tones. And then when you paint over it with lighter colors, you can, the light, the lighter colors will look better over the darker background. You can do that with saturation. You can do something that's 
uh, really super saturated and then go back over it with gray tones and that super saturated tone will look really glowy as it peeks out from underneath. So, gotta remind myself not to be worried to just really pull things way farther than you think they need to go. So, until the shape is off, and so I can see where the shape is incorrect. And so, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wipe out. And that starts to look pretty close. Gonna hit a neutral sort of undertone right here. Indicate some of the shadow under his chin. And that starts to really, I think, pull it out. That starts to look pretty good. And then, let's see, I want to put all this flesh tone down here and under his nose. Now let's shape out some of the rest of his mustache. I think I can get, keep getting that too warm. I think it's just pulling the color that's already down here. That's probably what's going on. All right. And I'm just mixing colors I think are gonna be the right color of gray. They keep on coming out too blue. So I'm gonna mix in some of this um, burnt sienna with it. That should kill that blue. Keep it gray, that's kind of nice. It's not quite got the right feel. I think the relationship up here is going to be different. So I'm gonna exaggerate his mustache a bit. I'm gonna put it. I have to stop here in a second. My neighbors are making a lot of noise, and it's probably gonna affect the quality of the audio. I really want to. Pull this up higher. Like that. I'm going to go to this um, kind of smaller round in here. Yeah, all right.
No, but I hit that with a little warmth, I think. Looks like about the right tone. So I will always go to this sort of complementary color mix over here, which is this grayed down blue to, to neutralize some of that really orangish color. And I might have it, that's probably too dark. Or you can just go to a sort of raw umber, see if that does enough for you. I want to sort of, it's the wrong color. I want to exaggerate the smirk a little bit. That's too light. So I'm going to go back to this little darker tone. Just pick up some raw umber. Gonna darken it up and still keep it warm. Okay, I think it's starting to piece together a bit. Um, I think, yeah, I think that kind of helped a little bit. Again, some of those tones. Yeah, I'm just blocking this stuff in again. I'm going to see if I can preserve these runs and drips in front of his brim right there.
All right, I'm going to darken the tone under his shoulder right here. I think I'm going to take a break. Darken that a bit. I'm just modulating the tone of his uh, shirt. And I'm sure you can hear that. My neighbor's having a good old time right now. somewhere to pick up with a little bit a little bit later. So I was draper right here, shirt, whatnot. All right, let's take a break. 